You gave them a chance to show that they were a media organization. They have now shown you what they are. This is Mr. Willis Hate Fleece, and I object to them being in this courtroom. And if, if, if you, I understand you're, you, if you disagree or you're in a tight spot, I'm making a record here, Judge, for appellate review. This organization is bad and it needs to be uh, moved out of the courtroom. And as I started to say, the problem is um, how do we decide which organization is, if you will, fair and legitimate versus otherwise? Uh, and as I said, um, the Supreme Court places the burden or uh, it's open, the burden is to open the courtroom versus not. So I take your um, objection, let's go to the motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Both uh, did a good job bringing all this to my attention. I'm going to make a record about you in a minute. You need to sit down and be quiet. For the record, I don't say these things to hear myself talk. An absolute decree of divorce is granted. By September 6th, you will pay $6,000 of what is due. I make a finding that paternity has been established. children. Specifically, now that time has passed and a couple deep breaths have been allowed to be had, I, upon reviewing the record and the testimony, this should grant or set aside this conviction as based on insufficiency of the evidence of criminal intent. Now, there's, this case would potentially going to set a very dangerous precedent. Um, family court, about two-thirds of litigants down there are unrepresented. Now, we criminalize paperwork for the first time ever. It's not a civil infraction. And I want to understand the context here. There's insufficient grounds of criminal intent. Now, things get heated in court on occasion. I understand. But the judge presided over these proceedings. She didn't take any action. She was the one who saw everything there. She was the one who saw things in context. You're here every day. You see things get heated. Okay. 
You know where to draw the line, Judge. It's your courtroom. That's your decision. Now, one of the reasons we have the insufficient evidence here of criminal intent, we have a system of push and pull by three branches of government. The judicial branch, which applies the law to the facts, the judge presiding over these cases down in the family court saw fit to send it over for criminal contempt. All right? It's the judiciary that runs the judiciary. It's the judge who runs the court. You are the final arbiter of all that happens in here. Now, the judge who presided in this case didn't file criminal charges and did not refer this to criminal charges. Why? She didn't, it's, uh, in, in French, didn't see evidence of criminal intent. Sloppiness, maybe, but there's not every, any evidence of criminal intent. Now, you, we're taking and holding a person to, stand, to the criminal standards on what in any other circumstances would be an administrative matter. Now, and I want to put this, and I want to I'll overlap these two arguments a little bit. Now, I want you to understand, there was a criminal hearing set. The judge recused herself and set it for criminal contempt hearing in front of Judge Henderson. The state, in an unprecedented move, sought to intervene in a family court case. I've never heard of that. Perhaps the state will explain that, because no one has ever explained it to me. They go to intervene. Then the family court judge doesn't take any actions, literally sits, is still sitting, I'm still sitting there pending. Now the judiciary has surrendered to the executive branch what happens in a courtroom. That's extraordinary. It just has absolutely no precedence in Nevada law. Your, the, the district court judge will not. There's no, and the reason this wasn't filed as a criminal case, and it shouldn't be a criminal case, or was filed, the reason it didn't go forward in family court was there was no criminal intent across the board. We've got paperwork filed, we got a six month lapse from the time it's filed to the time the hearing is held, and then the supposition is brought before the bench, well, look at this. Six months ago, he wasn't employed. Now he is. He must have been lying. Now, that's not criminal intent, and especially for a pro per litigant. Now, isn't the bar set awful high? I, I mean, at a certain point, would a pro per litigant even walk into family court? Now, this, and this is, of these 700,000 documents a year filed in family court, this is the only criminal prosecution I know of. Now, that goes through and laps right into another key point, newly discovered error, uh, evidence. There's an individual out there, Mr. Mark DeSero. I've never met him. I don't know much about him other than apparently he had been on a radio show. Mr. DeSero, for whatever reason, as you saw attached to my exhibit, when I couldn't, I kept questioning Detective Stanton. Well, Detective Stanton, you investigated him for filing for office, yes. And you concluded that he wasn't lying, he did in fact live there, yes. Then, when I asked the detective how he could have gotten a tip on, an, on Facebook, he says it was an anonymous tip. Well, you can't post anonymously on Facebook. It won't let you. Detective Stanton could not or would not say where he got the tip from. Well, Mr. DeCiro removed all doubt. It was me. I did. I put it all in on, on it. Well, that's interesting. And had I known that, that was very interesting news because Mr. DeCiro was one who recorded and took the finger or the uh, audio recording of Mr. McDonald's case and is that is the gravamen of the charge in the other five. Had I known Mr. DeCiro was an operative, he'd have been on the witness stand and he'd have a lot of explaining to do as to why he with no known ties to any of these people, decided to get involved, other than his involvement with Mr. Willis. I've never seen anything like this. I am at a loss to even begin to explain it. Now, there's insufficient evidence. This case violates the separations of power. There's no criminal intent. Then we get to the more interesting arguments. Selective prosecution. Why? Why is Mr. McDonald singled out as the only guy in family court. Now, the state can answer how come or why Detective Stanton decided to file this charge alone without request from the judge. And then if you have any meaningful doubt of what is in fact they are attempting to do here, read the comments on the Nevada Court Watchers. This will teach Steve Stanton and his minions, Michael McDonald, not to screw with us. Or words to that effect. I don't remember the exact posting. But that this was politically motivated is abundantly clear. And you can go ahead and read the comments. And, and if you think 
And over the night of the postage, I complained bitterly during the problem. There was 26 something pages of those kind of comments. All of them that general ilk. Now, this appears to be the crime of pissing somebody off in a family court. And that's all along the short of it. And I don't, nothing in this, nothing in my career in law in 30 years has prepared me for this case. I've never seen anything like it. I'm asking the court to vacate this conviction for the following grounds. Insufficient evidence of criminal intent, vindictive prosecution, newly discovered evidence, and selective enforcement. Thank you. Same. Thank you, Your and first of all, though, defense counsel seems to be confusing the standards because they're very, the defense counsel files, well, actually, three motions. A motion for acquittal, a motion for a new trial, and a discovery motion. I'll be able to address the discovery motion today. Um, regarding his motion for acquittal, um, that, is for, that motion can be made pursuant to NRS 175.31, which allows a court to enter a judgment for acquittal only when the evidence presented at trial is truly insufficient to sustain a conviction. This is an extreme sanction and it's infrequently used and for good reason as it essentially negates the jury's decision, which is a vital component of our criminal justice system. Such a motion can only be granted when the evidence presented at trial falls below the minimum <coughs> threshold for a conviction. So the question is whether after reviewing the evidence in the light most favorable to the prosecution, any rational juror could have found the defendant guilty of the counts beyond a reasonable doubt. If any rational juror could have found the defendant guilty, then the motion for acquittal must be denied. And further, as the Nevada Supreme Court stated in Walker, it's the jury's functions, not the court's, and not defense counsel's, to assess the weight of the evidence and determine the credibility of witnesses. Defense counsel is essentially asking this court to substitute his own uh, credibility evaluation of the state's witnesses uh, for that made by the jury, which is certainly not the legal standard. And I did not hear defense counsel cite a single legal tenant um, case law, statute, or otherwise. In, and as to what the Nevada Supreme Court stated in Evans, the standard does not allow the district court to act as a 13th juror and reevaluate the evidence and credibility of witnesses. And defense counsel's motion provides no specificity as to how the evidence introduced at trial was allegedly insufficient for any of the charges. And I know Your Honor is obviously familiar with the evidence that was introduced at trial, but I just want to briefly point out this was a trial at which the jury watched a video of the defendant testifying in family court in which he testified under oath that he was unemployed and had no regular income other than odd jobs and at most to make $800 per month. The jurors then observed the defendant's employment records for the time period in question, and they, which clearly showed that the defendant was employed as as the assistant administrator or the go-to IT guy uh, for the company at the time. And they heard testimony from Lisa Smith, the vice president of HR where the defendant worked, who, who testified that she saw him every day, he was their go-to IT guy, and she clearly, she clearly testified that he was employed at the time of the events. I, I don't know if you, I can't imagine a, a more clear case of perjury than that. So the argument that that's insufficient is quite frankly preposterous. And the only thing remotely specific that the defendant is saying was insufficient regarding, uh, that defense counsel is saying was insufficient is intent. And Your Honor, I think if this, if this court were to grant a motion for acquittal um, on the grounds that insufficient evidence of intent was introduced, then this court would run afoul of the Nevada Supreme Court's holding in Rode, which in which the court stated, and I quote, state of mind need not be proved by positive or direct evidence that may be inferred from conduct and the facts and circumstances disclosed by the evidence. And the facts in Rodig were actually somewhat similar to this case. The defendant in that case was working as a, as a marshal and his, and his job was to serve arrest warrants. And he signed, a number of, uh, he signed a number of documents indicating that he served arrest warrants on individuals when in fact he hadn't. And testimony at trial showed that, um, that these individuals he was claiming he served, he'd never even come into contact. And originally, the trial court um, agreed with the defense that there was insufficient evidence of conduct. And the Nevada Supreme Court um, overruled that decision and reinstated the jury's verdict, again, finding that it's the jury's job to infer intent from conduct. And there was substantial evidence introduced at trial regarding the defendant's conduct. Uh, the, the state introduced document, documents from court 
and clearly establish that the defendant filed them. It was his name in the upper left corner of these documents. It was it was his name on the March 13th filing, which contains a, cert a certificate of service with the defendant's signature, certifying that it was served on opposing counsel. Witnesses testified that they observed the defendant in areas where these documents were filed. The jury watched the jazz video of the defendant perjuring himself regarding his income, and in that video he acknowledged completing the financial disclosure form, which he signed under penalty of perjury. There was clearly more than sufficient evidence in this case to convict the defendant of the charges. And if, if defense counsel feels the evidence was insufficient, he may file an appeal and claim insufficient evidence was presented. The appellate court will have the benefit of having a complete transcript for review in the course of its decision. Now, regarding the motion for a new trial, uh, I won't, I won't belabor the fact that I addressed this in my opposition. Um, an alleged, um, an alleged selective prosecution, an indicted prosecution, um, an alleged lack of comity, these clearly can't be the basis for granting a new trial because they wouldn't be cured by granting a new trial. And the indicted prosecution has been addressed multiple times um, and has been denied by your, by your honor multiple times. Um, I won't belabor it, I won't belabor that. The defendant's motion provides no analysis or explanation as to how a random Facebook comment amounts to newly discovered evidence in this case. Uh, the motion just lists the criteria for newly discovered evidence and then just simply concludes that it constitutes newly discovered evidence. The evidence is that which tends to prove or disprove the existence of an alleged fact. I don't see how this this statement that how the state the statement on Facebook proves or disproves anything. Um, the defendant claims in his motion that it would assist in discrediting state's witnesses when that's been held by the Nevada Supreme Court on its own to be insufficient to, to constitute newly discovered evidence. It, it does nothing to discredit the testimony of Detective Standing or Marshall Willett. Um, the, I mean, the, Facebook, the Facebook post itself just says, I hope, I hope the supporter, Sanson supporters know that this could happen to them. Um, I don't see how that contradicts any of the testimony that was introduced at trial from any of the witnesses. It certainly doesn't constitute newly discovered evidence. It couldn't be used at trial because it would be hearsay. I don't see how it could even be used for impeachment because it's not a statement made by any of the state's witnesses. And the, the comment is the opinion of a Facebook commenter with no apparent connection to this case. And on page 11 of his motion, the defendant lists lists all of these supposed untruths uh, made by Detective Stanton, and, um, but these have no connection to, these allegations have no connection to the Facebook comment. And much of this is just a regurgitation of defense counsel's closing argument. Um, I don't see how this Facebook comment means that Detective Stanton knew he left the initial Facebook post, which led to him investigating in this case, or, um, or how this has any connection. Um, the comment about Facebook not allowing anonymous postings, defense counsel is just regurgitating the same argument made at trial. Um, at, at trial, um, defense counsel asked Detective Stanton, um, so this was an anonymous post from investigating, and he responded yes. And the jury observed that testimony, so obviously defense counsel's desire to just repeat this argument and take another crack at impeaching Detective Stanton cannot possibly be newly discovered evidence. This Facebook post isn't even evidence at all. And it's not even clear what the Facebook commenter meant by that statement. I hope all other Sanson followers know this could happen to them. Um, I see no way that this is evidence of concerted political activity. It's open to multiple interpretations. The defendant is not entitled to whatever interpretation he chooses. Um, regardless of what occurred in this case, the defendant was a litigant in family court, like many people are. He had a number of hearings in the course of that, in the course of his divorce, child custody hearings, and all of the things that are related to family court. He became involved with Veterans in Politics International. He obtained jazz videos from his family court hearings. He began posting them on YouTube, both on his own YouTube channel, as well as that of Veterans in Politics International. The defendant would post links to this on Nevada Court Watchers, the very Facebook site that Defense Counsel is complaining about. So people who were on the Nevada Facebook site began watching, began watching the defendant's videos and and, if somebody, and he even posted a video, the defendant posted the video in which he perjures himself. And someone noted that, that the judge was commenting that, it appeared to be a, that there appeared to be a forged letter that he filed. And, that, and, and eventually that's what led to uh, Detective Stan investigating in this case. 
It's been repeatedly explained to defense counsel in my oppositions that speculations as to the motivations of those who post comments on Facebook do nothing to negate the defendant's guilt. And the only connection that the Nevada Court Watcher's Facebook site has to this case is that it's the Facebook page that Detective Stan observed the two initial postings on that caused him to investigate the defendant's activities. The detective had no need to investigate the motivations of the individuals who posted the <coughs> He was investigating whether the content of the statements were true. There's no legal requirement that those who provide information to the police, whether directly or indirectly, uh, regarding criminal activity have pure motivations. If there were, it would be it would be nearly impossible for law enforcement to investigate anything. Detective Stanley was just doing his job, was just doing his job by investigating this. The state was doing its job upon receiving this evidence by filing charges. And and I find I find it deeply ironic that throughout the motion, defense counsel is just presenting this ipsy dixit that Detective Stanton perjured himself. While in the same motion, defense counsel argues that there was insufficient insufficient evidence as to the defendant's perjury. I, never has the defendant provided any legal support for his argument that an alleged political conspiracy is grounds for a new trial or for dismissal of any charges. There's, and further, there's no statutory basis for this post-trial discovery motion. As my co-counsel eloquently stated at trial, what happened in this case was far more boring than the defense counsel's version of events. What happened was the defendant committed criminal offenses and he got caught. That's it. And all of these allegations that defense counsel is making concern the manner in which he was caught. And there's been no legal or factual explanation as to how any of his claims regarding the manner in which the defendant was caught for his criminal activity negates the evidence of his guilt. And courts don't have the authority to dictate who law enforcement investigates, or for the most part, even how they conduct that investigation unless law enforcement runs afoul of the defendant's constitutional rights, which didn't happen here. There's simply no legal basis for granting any of these motions. Sufficient evidence was introduced at trial, far more than sufficient evidence was introduced as to the defendant's guilt. The defendant has not made any, has not presented any legal basis for granting a new trial, and there's certainly no statutory basis for this discovery motion. It's a frivolous motion. All three of them in each case denied. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. My colleague, uh, Mrs. Goldman, will not reflect this is a post-trial motion. I do not have the, or the advantage of having the transcript from the trial, so these are from those of the record. So it is, I have, that's the source of your Number two, my colleague in her indignation misses the key point, and she still didn't take up with the challenge that I, I asked her to do. There is no linkage between the videotape they saw and intent to commit perjury. That's the practical problem. You saw a guy who didn't have a lawyer getting beat up by a guy who did. That's not a criminal intent. And number two, my colleague still doesn't show that there was intent to defraud. Now, and the other fundamental thing, the court controls its courtroom. I've been in here one. I've been in here respectfully, Judge, watching you control civil docket. All right? I mean, you yell at people all the time when they're out of line. That's your job. Now, the judge who presided over this trial didn't do that. Didn't see fit to do that. The state intervened. We're going to substitute the executive branch's decision for the judiciary. And that case is actually still proceeding down there. They're usur this is a usurpation and a violation of constitutional separation scheme. We don't like the judge's ruling. We'll be the judge for him. We're going to intervene for this family court. No, you're not. Okay, we'll file them charges in. That's exactly what's happening here. Now, you know, this is not a legitimate criminal prosecution. My colleague still didn't, has not, will not ever point to another case like this one. And why Mr. McDonald gets singled out. And the answer is he's tied closely to Mr. Sanson. Mr. Sanson and Mr. Willick are in litigation as they agreed to. So Mr. San Lidick's, Mr. Willick's minions through his organization here plans that give more evidence and defense. And Mr. DeCiro admits it. I was the one who did it. DeCiro's the one who did the same case down the hallway. So Mr. And then Willick comes in here and attempts to be an honest broker of information. I, this is not a trial. This isn't a case. And it should be dismissed. And 
despite our indignation, all three of these motions are meritorious. Okay, thank you. Um, certainly, we have at least twice if not more, gone over the uh, motion for vindictive prosecution. I laid out my reasoning at least twice during the trial, but <clears throat> um, I'm denying Your Honor, that. Before, before Mike, may, may I Mike, have additional facts? Mike, and in, in support of this motion, Your Honor. No, your attorney is speaking on your behalf. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, so, uh, as I said during the trial, and I believe just before the trial, uh, that there were no grounds to show this was uh, vindictive prosecution. Uh, the state is given considerable latitude in determining what cases are brought and the court doesn't, except for constitutional grounds, have, if you will, jurisdiction and you mentioned it, the separation of powers uh, to somehow wave my magic wand and say, oh, I think this was inappropriate, even though it doesn't violate constitutional grounds, which I will get into because your other part of the motion is, was there sufficient evidence to support the jury's decision that they decided after hearing the evidence that um, Mr. McDonald committed those crimes. There's video evidence, as we've all talked about, regarding his testimony in family court under oath and the fact that he was clearly working when he denied that. And certainly a jury can, could, and a reasonable person, a reasonable juror, could find that he violated the statute. Um, and therefore, uh, the grounds for a new trial being uh, that there's no evidence to support the conviction are clearly belied by the testimony that was solicited. It is not for, under 175.381, for the judge to substitute his or her decision making for the 12 jurors who sat in judgment. As far as the uh, uh, selective enforcement, again, that was discussed uh, at least twice during the trial. And I understand you want to make this argument so you can, similar to uh, in a civil case, making a uh, motion for a directed verdict, you have to do it. Um, it's not the same in criminal, but I certainly don't um, object to your making the argument, but uh, it is more appropriate for uh, the appeal. And um, the same argument regarding vindictive prosecution and selective enforcement were made, as I said, twice prior to uh, today. This is the third time. Um, you, 
your argument that somehow the detective who initially started investigating uh, because there was an allegation that the defendant did not live where he said he lived uh, at the time he filed for uh, elected office. Um, my recollection, and we don't have the transcript, was that while he was doing all that, he was advised of these other issues. And so even though he determined that Mr. McDonald was living where he said, he had found other issues that were the subject of potential prosecution, which later turned out to be why we were here. Um, as far as the uh, third rounds, if you will, that there is additional information from Facebook, um, which doesn't seem to, and, and certainly in my mind, uh, impact the allegations in our trial, other than that um, I guess you're alleging that the source of some of these allegations was the person who posted on Facebook um, and whether or not that's a reliable means or not is again not for me to decide um, but your comments that somehow um, or your general comments that Facebook isn't anonymous is both true and not true you can have a Facebook page and this is just from you know the little I know uh, and have it set up with some basic uh, I don't know if you call it pseudonym or something uh, besides that uh, yes this individual does say he's the one that uh, uh, advanced it if you will and does give his name your right to in that regard um, but posting on a website uh, doesn't to me uh, you haven't made an argument that somehow that's going to lead to evidence which would be admissible in this case for a new trial to I'm not sure who you would even be trying to impeach unless it's Detective Stanton. You did a excellent job of doing that at trial and Mr. Willick also. Uh, I can't recall but uh, exactly, but I know he was on the stand for well over an hour um, and uh, cross-examined at length regarding his links to all of that, including the individual who um, uh, somebody from his office. Uh, so impeachment of him was quite thorough. Uh, so uh, that was the third ground as far as all of that. I'm denying the motion to set aside the jury verdict and or a new trial and uh, for discovery of some unknown Facebook um, evidence which is not relevant to the charges in this case or the trial for that matter. So based on all that, prepare an order. I think your honor appreciate the thoroughness of the and analysis. If it is respectfully disagree, I totally uh, understand. Your honor, uh, may I uh, ask that Mr. McDonald be released on his own recognizance? He spent almost eight months in custody in this case. He's got no prior criminal record and no history of violence. Uh, he is, does have one thing to take to my trial. He does have very good IT skills, and he can.
contribute to the community with an, uh, a management not having contact with any part of the lawsuit or his family or his children. And, and Your Honor, the defense counsel already filed a written Yeah, and, and that's on. Time. And one of the first things I was taught when I took over criminal was that these, those motions have to be in writing, which you did, and it's on for when? Monday. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.